here's another zombie question. Well, you guys all find <laughs> a zombie head in a cooler. What do you do? Oh, because it hasn't been shot in the head or... or right, it's like something. biting at you and like possibly moaning for brains. They, they, they've kind of done away with that, haven't they? That zombies are always asking for brains. Well, wasn't it only in one... in? Because that wasn't in the... No. They weren't going, brains, brains. Thank you. But seriously, where did this idea come from? I like to think of myself as a horror buff. Okay, snob. But even before the snobbery took hold, I, I'm talking under the age of like 10, I distinctly remember asking myself, why do people think this? Why does anyone think that zombies eat brains? Because frankly, I'd never seen them do it. I've got to look into this. The only, okay, the most fun, way to get to the bottom of this is chronologically, to hack our way through a brief history of zombie until we hit brains. To generalize, so as to not be here all day, before the late 60s, the word zombie largely referred to something quite different than we're used to. A zombie was thought of as a resurrected thrall of sorts, found mostly within Haitian folklore, and most famously depicted in fiction in the Bela Lugosi vehicle White Zombie from 1932. Yes, there was the undead aspect to these zombies, but little else would we find recognizable. No flesh or brain eating to speak of, no headshots, no nothing. Looking ahead is when things start to take on a more traditional aesthetic, and it's all thanks to one film. And to say it with me now, George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Everybody knows this story, even if you don't know it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. The little indie that could and would propel zombie films into the mainstream, despite the fact that the word zombie is never once uttered, at least until the sequels. Acting as the progenitor to most zombie fiction we know today, including acting as the direct inspiration for Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead, this film's rules would become ubiquitous across zombie fiction, from its flesh-eating quote ghouls and their weakness to head trauma, to its dramatic inter-character relationships. Now, get the hell down in the cellar. You can be the boss down there. I'm boss up here. You bastards. To its biting <laughs> social commentary. The film's dubious copyright status no doubt contributed to its far reach. Side note, if you don't know the story, I encourage you to look into it. It's one of the simplest yet biggest fuck-ups in filmmaking history. So this must be where the brains come in, right? Obviously not. Mr. Romero himself has even famously been quoted as saying, who says zombies eat brains? I've never had a zombie eat a brain. Well, that's pretty cut and dry. Brains or no brains? From there, history is history, and the zombie genre exploded with sequels, spin-offs, reboots, and reignitions in art forms that didn't even exist when Mr. Romero's seminal film came out. And once you sit back and watch, read, play, whatever, all of these genre-filling entries, one offbeat cult movie from 1985 seems to rear its rotting head as the source of all this brain-eating nonsense. Return of the Living Dead. Not to be mistaken with one of Romero's, though there is a connection, this film acts as a quasi-parody slash reinvention slash does whatever the hell it wants kind of movie. But I'm burying the lead, because regardless of what the film is, it gives us this. And this. Brains. And all of this. Hell, writer-director Dan O'Bannon even paid extras, well, extra, to eat real, raw calf brains on set. There's so much damn brains and brain-eating in this movie that you almost have to blame it for the misconception. But can we really blame the pop culture proliferation of brains on this one little flick? It was a soft, modest success upon release, making its budget back plus about 10 million and receiving decent reviews, but it was in no way a blockbuster. So what happened? In a word, nerds. And to name one, Matt Groening. Yes, the Matt Groening you're thinking. It might sound random, but it's true. And his connection to this film is actually more flesh and blood than you might think. According to The Complete History of the Return of the Living Dead, Groening pitched several taglines for the movie, one of which actually wound up in some of the advertising. But a tagline is not what brought the brains to the public. This was. 
Dad, we did something very bad. Did you wreck the car? No. Did you raise the dead? Yes. But the car's okay. Uh-huh. All right, then. Viewed by approximately 13.7 million households on its air date, netting itself the top spot in ratings and being hailed by contemporary critics as, quote, particularly impressive, this one little segment of the third Treehouse of Horror Halloween specials, written by Sam Simon and John Vitti, is, in my opinion, the culprit. Now, if you thought that Night of the Living Dead with its public domain screw-up was culturally pervasive, that is nothing on the power of television. Especially back in the days before streaming services, before literally unending choices were at our fingertips, appointment television was in charge, and everyone watched it. And everyone watched The Simpsons. Put yourself in people's homes, in syndication no less, and you're part of the family. And that is another big thing. Family. All of a sudden, children who have never even heard of Return of the Living Dead, or were just way too young to watch it because of its hard R rating, get to see a TV PG parody brought to them by their favorite cartoon family, right in prime time no less. And those kids all grew up remembering hilarious, what would become fan favorite bits, the likes of... <gasps> Dad, you killed the zombie Flanders! He was a zombie? And some of them themselves went on to become influencers, bloggers, content creators, just general citizens of the media world who would forevermore, casually, go on to associate zombies with brains. All thanks, in a very strange, roundabout, trickle-down way, to The Simpsons. Well, I'm sure glad we didn't turn into mindless zombies. Shh! TV! Man, fall down. Funny. Mm. 